Okay, this is the fourth in a series of videos where we're exploring integer partitions leading up to a proof of the Rogers Ramanujan identities. So let's just recall that we say lambda is a partition of n if lambda is a k-tuple where all of the parts add up to n and then we have this non-increasing rule. So lambda 1 is bigger than or equal to lambda 2 all the way up to lambda k which is bigger than or equal to 1. Then we define p of n to be the number of partitions of n. And then for a formal variable q, we define p of q to be the generating function for the number of partitions of n. In other words, it's the sum n equals 0 to infinity of p of n q to the n, um, which we have shown in uh, part 2 that this is the infinite product of 1 over 1 minus q to the n, where we interpret this as a geometric series. And just as an aside, we say p of 0 equals 1, just to make this uh, product have a nicer form. Okay, so in the last video, we calculated the generating function for lots of types of restricted partitions, and we hinted at the fact that those generating functions can be used in order to prove some theorems involving restricted partitions, and that's what we're going to do here. So the first one we're going to attack is the following. So the number of partitions of n into odd parts equals the number of partitions of n into distinct parts. So in the first video of this series, we saw that there was numerical evidence that this would be true, and now we're going to prove it is true, and we're going to use generating functions. So let's look at this proof. So let's recall from the last video that the number of partitions of n into distinct parts has a generating function given by the following. So this is the infinite product m equals uh, 1 to infinity of 1 over 1 minus q to the 2m minus 1. And then let's also recall that p distinct of q was equal to the product of k equals 1 to infinity of 1 plus q to the k. So proving this theorem is equivalent to proving that these two generating functions are the same, and that's exactly what we'll do. So let's start with maybe this p distinct. So p distinct q, and now let's write out a couple of terms. So this is going to be 1 plus q times 1 plus q squared times 1 plus q cubed times 1 plus q to the fourth and so on and so forth. Good. And notice I've left myself a little bit of room there. And I'm going to multiply by a version of 1 in between. So here I'm going to multiply by 1 minus q over 1 minus q. And now here I'm going to multiply by 1 minus q squared over 1 minus q squared. Here I'm going to multiply by 1 minus q uh, cubed over 1 minus q cubed. And here 1 minus q to the fourth over 1 minus q to the fourth. Okay, good. So let's see what that gives us. We can group the numerators into pairs like this, which are going to multiply to difference of squares type, type of things. So that's going to give us 1 minus q squared times 1 minus q to the fourth times 1 minus q to the sixth times 1 minus q to the eighth and so on and so forth. So we have 1 minus q to every even power in the numerator. But now, notice in the denominator, we have 1 minus q to every power. So we have 1 minus q, 1 minus q squared, 1 minus q cubed, 1 minus q to the fourth, and so on and so forth. So only even powers in the top and all powers in the bottom. Notice the evens are going to cancel. So those are going to cancel with things that are further down the line, and that gives us this 1 over 1 minus q, 1 minus q cubed, and so on and so forth. In other words, we can write that out, 1 minus q, 1 minus q cubed, and all the odd ones, but that's exactly equal to the generating function for partitions of n into odd parts. 
And that finishes this proof. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we're gonna look at another one that's pretty similar to this. Okay, so now we're gonna look at a pretty similar theorem that's gonna have a pretty similar proof, but it's nice to see more than one of these. So the number of partitions of n into parts not divisible by three is equal to the number of partitions of n into parts repeated at most once. So let's compare that to the last one. So that was odd parts. So we can re-envision odd parts as parts not divisible by two. And then we had distinct parts. So so that's like parts repeated at most zero times. So in other words, no repetition at all. Something can only happen once. But if it's repeated at most once, then something can happen twice. So we're gonna do this just as we did the last one, the generating functions, but we're gonna derive the generating functions during the proof. So let's first of all say uh, P um, R of Q, maybe for repeated at most once, and so let's uh, motivate what that should be. So that should be 1 plus q plus q squared times 1 plus q squared plus q to the fourth times 1 plus q cubed plus q to the sixth and an infinite product like that. Okay, so why is that true? Well, notice this is repeating 1 zero times. Uh, sorry, this is zero ones. This is one one and this is two ones. In other words, this term would be repeating one one time. And here we have using zero twos, using one two, or using two twos. In other words, repeating two one time. Again, using three zero times, using three one time, using three two times. In other words, repeating three one time. So there's our generating function. Now we could write that into a, a tidy product with the product um, notation, but we don't need to for this. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing we did in the last proof. In other words, multiply by something. So let's take this and give ourselves some room. Um, so 1 plus q squared plus q to the fourth. And then down here, 1 plus q cubed plus q to the sixth. And that's going on forever. Okay, the new term we're going to introduce is this. 1 minus q. 1 minus q squared, 1 minus q cubed, and then we're going to introduce that into the denominator as well. So 1 minus q, 1 minus q squared, 1 minus q cubed. And now let's see what we get. We'll group the numerator terms as follows. So here, here, and here. Notice these. this first numerator term is going to multiply together to be 1 minus q cubed, that's like a difference of cubes formula. The second one will be one minus q to the sixth. This third one, one minus q to the nine, and so on and so forth. So notice we're getting one minus q to all multiples of three, but then in the denominator, we're going to get one minus q, one minus q squared, one minus q cubed, and so on and so forth, all um, factors of one minus q to some power. So now let's look at what cancels. So all of these things in the numerator will cancel with the denominator. And that leaves us with things in the denominator that are of the form one minus Q without a multiple of three. So this is gonna be equal to the product, M equals zero to infinity of one over one minus Q to the three M plus one, and then 1 minus q to the 3m plus 2. In other words, we're skipping all multiples of 3 in these exponents in the denominator. But recall that these guys in the denominator tell us what types of parts we're allowing. So notice we're allowing parts of the form 3m plus 1 and 3m plus 2, but nothing else. In other words, we're not allowing parts of the form 3m or parts that are divisible by 3. So let's say this is equal to the number of partitions, sorry, the partition generating function for not divisible by three. So I'll put a three with a line through it of Q and that uh, finishes the proof of this theorem.